Welcome to the Korean Atlas and History. Each episode, we will take you on an exploration through some aspect of Korean culture, the landscape, the history, and more. Today, on the Korean Atlas in History, Korean leaders, Lee Seung-min. Lee Seung-min was the first president of South Korea, and he led South Korea through the war. Lee Seung-min was born on April 18, 1875, in Daekyong, a village in what is now North Hwanghae, North Korea. Yi was the oldest boy in his family to survive infancy. He had two sisters. He could trace his lineage all the way back to King Taejong of Joseon. In 1877, his family moved to Seoul, where he had a traditional Confucian education. At the age of nine, he was rendered virtually blind until cured by Horace Newton Allen, an American medical missionary. In 1894, he enrolled in an American Methodist school called Beje Hakdang, where he converted to Christianity. While in school, he worked as the head and the main writer of the newspapers Beje Hakdang and Mail Shinmun. He also earned money by teaching Korean to Americans. He graduated from school in 1895. It was in 1895 that the First Sino-Japanese War ended, and influence over Korea passed from the Chinese to the Japanese. He became involved in anti-Japanese groups from around this time. At one point, Yi was implicated in the assassination of Empress Myung-song, the wife of King Go-jong, but a female American physician helped him avoid the charges. He was one of the forerunners for Korean independence, and he obtained the rank of Lee Kwan in the imperial legislature. After entering the civil service, he was implicated in a plot to remove King Gojong from power, and he was then imprisoned. After a failed escape attempt, he was sentenced to life in prison. During this time, he faced abuse and torture, yet he also had time to write. He translated and compiled the Sino-Japanese War Record, wrote The Spirit of Independence, compiled the New English-Korean Dictionary, and he wrote in the Imperial Newspaper. In 1904, he was released from prison and he moved to the U.S. In 1905, he and Yoon Byung-gu met with President Theodore Roosevelt and Secretary of State John Hay in an attempt to convince the U.S to preserve Korean independence. The attempt was unsuccessful. Yi stayed in the U.S. in what was called an exile. From the years 1905 to 1910, he received a Bachelor of Arts from George Washington University, a Master of Arts from Harvard, and a Ph.D. from Princeton. In 1910, he returned to a Japanese-occupied Korea, In 1912, he was implicated in the 105-man incident, an event in which over 700 Koreans were arrested for what the Japanese believed to be an attempt to assassinate Masatake Tarauchi, the governor general of Korea at the time. He fled to the U.S. and met with Woodrow Wilson in an attempt to convince him to help those involved in the 105-man incident. Yi's attempt to convince Wilson failed to bring any change. On March 1, 1919, the March 1st Movement occurred. The March 1st Movement was an event in which nearly 2 million Koreans participated in more than 1,500 demonstrations, mostly focused on Korean independence from Japan. As the processions grew, the Japanese local military authorities could not control the crowds. They panicked and they called for the military to quell them. The Japanese police force and army massacred several thousand people. As a reaction, 
Lee and So Jai Pil held the first Korean Congress in Philadelphia. The goal was to get the United States to help secure Korean independence from Japan. Yi was later appointed Prime Minister for the Provincial Government of the Republic of Korea. This was a group that acted as the Korean government in exile, based in Shanghai, China. He was also given a position equivalent to president for the Hansung Provincial Government. In June 1919, as Prime Minister of the Provincial Government of the Republic of Korea, he declared Korea's independence from Japan. In 1922, he returned to Hawaii to focus on publication, education, and religion. In March 1925, he was impeached over allegations of a misuse of power, and he was removed from office. Despite this, he continued to claim the position of Korean president by referring to the Hansung Provincial Government. He continued working for Korean independence and moved to Washington in 1939 to help further his goal. After the outbreak of World War II, he convinced President Franklin D. Roosevelt to approve the existence of the Korean provincial government. As part of this plan, he cooperated with anti-Japanese strategies conducted by the Office of Strategic Services. At the end of the war, he returned to Korea with a strong anti-communist disposition. He refused to join U.S.-Soviet cooperation committees and later refused to negotiate with the North. As he had some deal of fame among Koreans, he was seen as more or less acceptable by Korean politicians. More importantly, though, he spoke fluent English, which none of his rivals did, and this bolstered support from the American occupation government. In November 1947, the United Nations General Assembly recognized Korean independence. On July 20, 1948, Yi was elected president of South Korea with 92.3% of the vote. The next month, the North proclaimed its own statehood. Soon after taking office, Yi enacted laws that severely curtailed political dissent. Allegedly, many leftist opponents were arrested and killed at this time, the most controversial case being Kim Gu, who was assassinated with what appeared to be a link to Yi. Yi's government was authoritarian and began detaining and torturing suspected communists. Yi's government also oversaw several massacres, including the Moon Gyeong Massacre, which included over 80 people, mostly elderly and children, as well as the Jeju Uprising, which reported over 14,000 victims. By 1950, Yi had about 30,000 alleged communists in jail and about 300,000 suspected sympathizers enrolled in re-education programs. Before the start of the war, both Yi and Kim Il-sung of the North hoped to hold the entire peninsula under their control. The United States had refused to arm the South with heavy weapons, yet the North was heavily armed. On June 25, 1950, there was an outbreak of hostilities, and the 38th parallel was overwhelmed by the North. He advised citizens not to worry and remain in their workplaces, and he told the people that all the cabinet members and the parliament would do the same. In fact, though, he had already left the city of Seoul with most of the government. At midnight on June 28, 1950, the South destroyed the Han Bridge in order to prevent the North's advance which also prevented thousands of citizens from fleeing the North. Yi's government created a safe zone around a defensive perimeter at the Nakdong Bulge, near Busan. The war raged on, and in December, Yi began the December Massacres of 1950, in which the thousands of alleged communists in prison camps were executed. The time of Yi's regime during the Korean War marks what is probably the worst corruption in any regime of South Korea. High-ranking soldiers would steal the pay of low-ranking soldiers and leave the low-ranking soldiers without a penny. 
One of the worst marks of this abuse was the National Defense Corps incident, in which thousands of men were recruited for the National Defense Corps, but many froze or starved to death as the money for food and heating was embezzled by General Kim Yoon Goon. General Kim and five other officers were publicly shot in Daegu on August 12, 1951. In 1952, it seemed unlikely that Yi would be re-elected by the National Assembly because of corruption and political repression. However, Yi was still popular with the people. Thus, Yi attempted to amend the Constitution to allow him to hold a direct popular vote election. The National Assembly rejected this, so Yi held a mass arrest of the political opposition and then passed his desired amendment. He received 74% of the popular vote, and he was re-elected in 1952. In 1953, the U.S. began negotiating an armistice, which Yi strongly opposed. The armistice was signed by the United Nations Command on behalf of the international community, with E not attending. After the war, South Korea began rebuilding, and E ran for presidency again in 1956. It should have been his last term, but as soon as he became president, he amended the Constitution to allow the president to run for an unlimited amount of terms. He won again in 1960 but he won with such a large margin that the opposing Democratic Party claimed the election was rigged. This led to demonstrations. Police in the city of Masan shot demonstrators, and this led to the April Revolution, which forced Yi to resign on April 26, 1960. On April 28, the CIA flew Yi out of South Korea in order to escape the angry protests. He lived out the rest of his life in exile in Honolulu, Hawaii, until he suffered from a stroke and died on July 19, 1965. His body was returned to Seoul and buried in Seoul National Cemetery. We hope you have enjoyed the Korean Atlas and History. Much of our information has been obtained through the Namu Wiki and Wikipedia. If you want to learn more or study the Korean names of these places, check out our Memrise tool. If you wish to download all the episodes of this podcast, want more information, or want transcripts of this podcast, visit us at www.koreanatlasandhistory.com. If you wish to send us an email, you can email us at Korean Atlas and History at gmail.com. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.